What's up guys? Heat Wave Chronicles day I think three or four. I'm not sure what the high for today is, but man, I came down to the shop just now. It's 6 a.m. It's 74 degrees outside, but man, it is like 85 degrees in here. It is maybe warmer. It is hot in here, so I'm gonna get the AC going in just a minute. It's looking like we're gonna tap out around 100 degrees today. So not the hottest day of the heat wave, but still hot. First thing we're starting with today is the pink Ibanez RG450 I've been working on. I'm gonna throw some clear coat on this thing. Like I said, it's just after 6 a.m. So I'm gonna throw the headstock logo on it right now. We're gonna go with the white logo, change the truss rod cover to white, and then we're gonna bring it out to the spray booth and start shooting the clear on the body and the headstock. All right, the pink guitar is sprayed, the clear coats that is, and it looks awesome. We got it back in the house. It's now 12.30, it's just after noon. I've done a couple little things here and there, but now I'm gonna start working on the OLP frets. And um, one of my personal guitars actually, this Jackson here. So I sold a couple guitars from the personal collection lately and my walls are looking a little bare. So I wanted to get this Jackson back up on my display wall in the house. And it, I took the bridge pickup out a while ago. It doesn't have strings on it. I actually still have the bridge pickup, so I'm gonna drop it back in today, get this thing strung up and get this thing playing, which will only take me maybe an hour and a half or something to wire it up and get it rocking and rolling. So that'll be a couple little tasks I'm gonna be doing out here in the shop, but it is so hot outside. I mean, it's not the most insane heat that we've had this week. It's 103, but the, the nights are just not cooling down as much as they were a few days ago. It's still like 85 or 83 degrees or something at night, which isn't horrible, you know, but it's not giving the, the inside of the shop here much time to cool down because I shut the AC off in here at night or else it would be, you know, 110 during the day. So we got to keep the AC on during the day when I'm working in here. But right now the AC is rocking and rolling. I turned it on early this morning because when I walked out at like 5 o'clock and started prepping the pink guitar to spray, it was already warm in here. And it was probably like 78 outside actually this morning at like 5.30 in the morning when it was still dark out. It was actually really nice. But man, it is hot out here now. I've been in the house for a couple hours. I just got back out here right now. And yeah, the AC is not quite enough to keep up with the heat coming in. into my. It's a garage, you know, it's a two-car garage here. And the top of this is actually exposed to, it's a, uh, it's a balcony off the master bedroom here. So there's actually not like a full, a ton of like, uh, you know, there's no roof tiles over this. It's like a walking space, like a patio. So it is hot in here. I'm standing right in front of the AC unit. Let me show you what we're doing here. We got the AC blowing right here. I'm actually working on the side of this workbench here. So I got my fret, the, the neck here. So this is the file I'm using to dress the fret ends. It's a steel Mac file. And all I'm doing really is just making it so these ends here that I filed down already earlier with the 45, making sure they're nice and smooth. And I've done the first couple frets, like I said, standing right in front of the AC. I turned it this way and I'm working on the end of the table, not only so I'm right in front of the AC, but also because the UFC is on. So I love watching UFC, if you guys don't know. Big fan, obsessed with it. I watch every event I can. And UFC Paris is on. So I'm watching the UFC, working for a couple hours out here. Like I said, it's 12.30. I'm going to try to dress the ends of all these frets and then work on the Blue Jackson. Then uh, i got a couple parts to order for some guitars for, that I'm working on for customers. And after that, I'm guessing it'll be about around 2.30 or maybe 3 o'clock by then. I'm going to head in the house and I'm going to work on some videos. Work on these hot day videos and, uh, and I have the OLP video I want to get start getting ready for Patreon. And Sunday morning shred for tomorrow because today is Saturday. So... I got a few videos I'm going to be working on in there for like the last three hours of the workday from like 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So we'll go ahead and shut the shop part of the, of the house down early, head inside soon, and get editing. All right, this bad boy is looking nice and smooth now to play it. It's, well, it's not playing great yet, but it is feeling great. So that's awesome. I'm going to set this thing aside now. It took me about a half an hour. 
quicker than I expected. And now we're going to throw the Jackson up on the bench here. I'm going to throw some power slinkies on it, some Ernie Ball power slinkies. These are a little bigger than I play for my standard or half step down guitars. These are 48 on the low end, 11 on the high end. Normally I like 942s, possibly a 1046 if I'm going to go down to half step down. But this guitar is going to be tuned full step down. So I've got uh, one other guitar I think that I keep in full step down. And a lot of the progressive music I write is in full step. So when I go to play my own music, I always like to have a guitar ready to go. I actually might even throw it in drop D or, you know, drop C full step down. So I think these strings will be good for that. I don't love huge, thick strings. I mean, the tone you get out of them is monstrous, but I like the playability of the lighter strings. So power slinkies, custom gauge. I think these are going to be good. So these are what I'm going to go with on this guitar. Let's get this going. I think I have a Screamin' Demon down there that I tried to buff out because it had some scratches on it. I ended up taking the paint off the Allen head screws. So this guitar is going to have a little bit different of a looking uh, Screamin' Demon pickup, but it's kind of cool too to have like a weird little chrome accent on the screws. So let's get this thing put back together. Speaking of gauges of strings, check out these. I've never seen these before. These are the lightest. Ernie Balls are the lightest guitar strings I've ever seen. Zippy Slinkies. They're a 7 on the high end, 36 on the low end, which means you're not going to get any chugging tones out of these, but bendability and playability, you'll be able to get your action super low to the fretboard and probably could shred all day long on these things and never hurt your fingers. Also with bending, you could probably bend them really far, but you're probably also going to snap more of them too if you're bending far on a 7. I've never even heard of that. Um, 942, you know, is the standard. I've played on 8s before, which are extra light, and that was uh, 838s. Seymour Duncan makes, or uh, Ernie Ball makes a set. I think they're blue. But yeah, I ordered a set of these Zippy Slinkies last time I ordered. I'm sponsored by them, so go check them out. They're my favorite string. But as I was restocking on the 1046s and 942s, I always keep plenty of those in stock. I like keeping Power Slinkies on hand. I got a couple sets of those always. And then I always pick up like a, a set or two of Cobalt and other miscellaneous things just in case my customers ask me for some when I restring their guitars. But yeah, the 736s, I'm not sure when I'm going to actually try these out, but I do have a few guitars out here in the shop that I'm rebuilding for myself that probably won't be done for a while. But being that I don't play that much at this point, you know, I'm so busy with working on guitars. These might sit around a while before I actually try them out. I also have a set of Hetfield strings that I'm going to throw on the LTD Explorer that I'm working on, which again, won't be done for months, a couple months at least, because I haven't even started painting it yet. But yeah, I got plenty of really cool, interesting strings like these to, to test out one day. What do you guys like as far as string gauge and what tunings do you use them for? Have you ever tried anything this light before? Let me know in the comments if you guys have ever tried anything this light, because this is insane to me. This is the pickup I'll be using in this Blue Jackson. You can see the logo started to come off too when I was using the polishing compound on it. So beware if you're going to go polish your pickups to remove the scratches. It could actually end up buffing out the black hardware on it and removing the logo. All in all, it took about 45 minutes to get that pickup wired in, restring the guitar, and then do an adjustment to the Floyd Rose springs in the back to get the new string gauge set up on this guitar. I love these old 90s Japanese made Jacksons. This guitar is actually one that I bought maybe seven years ago because it reminded me of a guitar that my friend's dad had when I was young. When I was about 10 years old and I had just started playing guitar, actually it was the kid who got me into guitar, his dad had a Jackson just like this. And I remember his dad would let him bring the guitar over to my house. At the time I just had a Squire Stratocaster, pretty much the cheapest guitar you could buy in 1995. That's what I had, three single coil pickups, you know, a white pick guard on the front, a little traditional, a little cheap beginner's guitar, but it, it worked for me and it's what I had. But I remember when my buddy brought over this Jackson, his dad's guitar, it was so awesome looking. And I didn't really know anything about pickups or guitar parts or anything like that yet. So I remember he would bring over his dad's pedals sometimes, his dad's Jackson. He would show me his dad had a PV half stack, all this awesome metal gear, that totally inspired me and probably set me on my path to who I am today. But I remember this Blue Jackson so well. It was exactly like the one that I have here. The color was just so rich and so cool looking. The humbucker pickups. 
I didn't even know what they really did, but I just knew that they looked really cool compared to my single coil pickups. That sharp, pointy reverse headstock. I had never, you know, I had a Fender Stratocaster, so I had never really seen a sharp headstock like that or even a reverse headstock. And it just looked so, I guess, metal, but I didn't even know it was metal at the time. And then there was the Floyd Rose on it. I didn't even know what a Floyd Rose was, but I saw it and it was this huge, massive metal thing with all these technical pieces in it. At that time, I was still playing with Legos, so maybe that's what drew me to the technical looking Floyd Rose. It looked like a bunch of Lego pieces stuck together or something. And I knew I had to have a guitar like that. Years and years later, I was surfing eBay and I found this one for sale for like 400 bucks. I snatched it up and ever since then, I've had a bunch of different pickup configurations in it. And the Screamin' Demon has landed in it three or four times at least. So it's only fitting that I put it back in this guitar now. Actually, when I bought this guitar, it came with a maple fretboard, you know, a maple, solid maple neck. And it was really cool, but I ended up swapping the neck with another Jackson I had. And now it's got the Rosewood fretboard, which I feel like it kind of fits the dark body better than the light maple fretboard did. But I think my friend's dad also had a Rosewood fretboard. So this kind of fits. It totally reminds me of those early days of playing guitar. It's a beast of a guitar. The necks on these guitars are great. I love this thing. It's very nostalgic. Even though I don't have a rich history with this exact one, it looks just like the one I used to see all the time. And here it is in all its glory. Finished up on the wall, we got the Iron Age kill switch with the blue LED in it, the Seymour Duncan Screamin' Demon, and the Al Nico Pro in the neck. It's got some great variety of tones. The stock Jackson License Floyd. And yeah, this is just a, such a cool guitar. The direct mount pickups is another thing you don't see in all the 90s Japanese Jacksons. It's kind of unique to, the, I think, the 1993 Dinky Reverse models, which is what this one is. Here you could see it amongst all my favorite guitars, my Edwards, my LTD MH-1000s, my old Les Paul Custom, my trusty Jackson RR24Q Rhodes, and my LTD Acoustic. This here is a seven-string Ibanez that I've been working on for my customer, Andrew. Navy blue with black crackle, and here it's got a couple coats of clear on it. I love the way the crackling came out on this guitar. It came out with real big cracks and looks so cool. I've also been working on the headstock for this guitar, but this week I ran into a little issue with it. All right, I just pulled the tape here on the headstock and there's a binding that comes around the front and wraps around to the sides. It's black, but there's a white stripe on the inside. And we wanted to preserve that. The tape actually completely failed and I've been spending about an hour so far with an X-Acto blade scraping the binding away, scraping the paint off the binding, and then using some 600 grit sandpaper and alcohol to clean it off and so far we've got it looking really good wrapping around the top edge coming around the front and I'm starting to work on this bottom edge here now so you could see how bad it is this is pretty much what it all looked like before covered real thick build up on the edges and now I'm starting to work my way down this edge cleaning it off so I wanted to show that to you guys so you could see once it's done what it started like. This sped up section here shows about 12 minutes of footage compressed down. And when this one debuts on Trash to Thrash, you'll get a better look at exactly how I was doing this and how I redid the entire guitar. And now it's looking good. That white line looks real sharp and defined. I'm happy with this. I wasn't really sure how this was going to turn out, but... Yeah, I'm really happy. The tape totally let me down, but we fixed it. We got this. Now I got one more guitar to talk about with you guys today, and it's this 1993 Jackson King V that you guys have been seeing on the page. About a week before this, I had finished painting it, and that was on day one of the Hot Day Vlogs, if you saw part one and part two of this short video series. If you guys have seen my refinishing videos, you know I love a matched headstock, and you know I love putting new vinyl logos on the headstocks. I have a vinyl cutting machine, so I make my own logos, and here I made a black Jackson logo for this guitar. I actually considered doing a navy blue logo just to kind of keep the navy blue theme going, but everywhere where it goes over the cracks, it's going to kind of blend in. And a black logo, I mean, you can't go wrong with a black logo, especially when this guitar is going to have black hardware, black tuners, black truss rod covers, so the black's going to kind of tie everything together up at the headstock. 
Of course, I'm going to be bringing this back out to the spray booth and putting clear over the headstock. So that's going to seal the headstock logo on. I wouldn't want to just leave it raw on the headstock, but man, does that look good already. For this guitar, I wanted to go with a satin clear coat. So I used a product by Diamond. Diamond is available on Amazon. I'll leave a link down in the description to their products. It's a great clear coat. I used it in the past on the Washburn Solar Flying V, and I loved the way that looked, so I wanted to do the same thing on this guitar. It's also a way that I can get the guitar finished quite a bit quicker than a gloss clear coat, because with gloss, you need to really let it cure for seven to 14 days before you can do any work on it. You need to level sand it and buff it out and polish it and all this stuff. With a satin clear coat, if you spray it well, you're done with it in a few days. It hardens up really quick and you're good to go. All right, guys, and that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much for watching the Hot Day vlogs. This is the last part of the series, and I did a lot more things in this week than just what these videos showed, but I don't want to spoil all the guitars coming up on future episodes of Trash to Thrash. If you want to help support Guitar Guts and Trash to Thrash and all the videos I do, then go sign up to the Patreon page, available at patreon.com slash guitar guts. There's also a link down in the description of this video to the Patreon. It's $10 a month, and you get exclusive content not available to the public. Right now, there's the OLP MM1 rebuild that I'm doing on there. There's also the Alien Blood Rhodes number two. It's a short series. Both of these are short series that I did rebuilding these guitars. Part two of the OLP MM1 just went up, so go check that out. Patreon members also have access to the Guitar Guts Discord page, which is a chat room where me and other guitar builders and modders and Patreon members come together to chat about guitar builds, their guitar collections, they, I answer questions for people, we talk about working out, UFC, video games, there's general chats, it's really cool, a lot of really cool people in there, so go sign up to the Patreon if you want to be part of that. And of course, I do my guitar giveaways, the raffles, that's available only to the Patreon members. So if you want to win one of my creations, go sign up to the Patreon. Now, I know a lot of people are boycotting Patreon, and maybe they just want to support Guitar Guts, but they don't want to go sign up to a whole nother thing. I also offer a YouTube membership for $5 a month, which will give you all the exclusive Patreon videos here on YouTube. So you'll have special access, and it'll even put a badge by your username. So when you leave comments, you get a Guitar Guts badge right next to your name. I'll also be releasing a set of emojis soon that'll be only for the exclusive YouTube members. So go sign up to either one of those. Like I said, it's a huge way to help support. And of course, there's the Guitar Guts store. Head over to guitarguts.com and at the top of the page, you'll see a link that says Guitars for Sale. That's actually the Guitar Guts store. So you'll find all kinds of merch in there, t-shirts, baby onesies. I'm a father. So I started making really cool guitar related clothing for babies, stickers, pedals, kill switches, coasters, koozies. We got all kinds of cool merch on there. So go buy something and show your support for Guitar Guts. I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much, and I'll see you very soon in the next video. Rock on, my friends.